Man follows the ways of earth. The earth follows the ways of heaven. Heaven follows the ways of Tao. Tao follows its own way. One of the most sacred Taoist retreats is the Blue City Mountain in Sichuan Province. It was founded thousands of years ago. The faithful still make the arduous climb up the mountain on their pilgrimage to the Temple of the Celestial Master. Taoists believe that man is only one element in the universe, a tiny part of an integrated whole. To achieve true peace of mind, he must discover the rhythm of the cosmos. He must learn to live in harmony with nature. He must flow with Tao, the way. The disciples of the Celestial Master came here to pursue their beliefs and to seek transcendence to immortality. In their quest, they practiced alchemy. They experimented with hundreds of natural substances, leading to the use of many plants endowed with the ability to cure common ailments. These plants contributed to a system of herbal medicine that is still widely used today. The temple courtyard is surrounded by towering ginkgo trees, a primeval species, symbols of longevity. Ginkgo trees live for hundreds of years, producing nuts highly prized for their curative properties. Integral to Taoist thought is the principle of duality, known as yin-yang. Every aspect of life, all growth, all change, is governed by these two interacting forces. Yin and yang are complementary, like warm and cool, light and dark, male and female. One cannot exist without the other. Well-being is achieved by a constant balance of the two. Foods and cooking also are ruled by this principle. This Taoist priestess 
is preparing to marinate vegetables, an ancient tradition at the temple. The salt for this process comes from natural brine wells deep within the Sichuan mountains. Salt has been extracted from the underground mines for 2,000 years. It is the mountain salt which brings out the unsurpassed flavor of the savory pickled vegetables. Red peppers are pungent with strong young properties and do not blend well with other pungent vegetables like ginger. They should be combined with a complementary vegetable, one that is cool and ying in nature. The priestess adds the peppers to a jar already containing green beans, a mild vegetable. In this way, the two achieve a harmonious balance. These traditional jars have a water-filled rim which creates an airtight seal. In the autumn, newly fallen ginkgo nuts are gathered. The shelled nuts are used to make another specialty of the temple, ginkgo chicken, a nutritious dish believed to replenish vitality. Ginkgo nuts are thought to be yin because the flowers of the tree blooms only in the dark of night. The rooster is young, for it is the first creature to greet the morning. Its comb is believed to absorb the first rays of the sun. Each ingredient complements the other, yin and yang, light and dark. Herb collectors dig for medicinal plants on mountain slopes. Hundreds of different species grow in the damp forest. Fragrant angelica, snake gourd, dragon's gall, purple monk's hood are all ingredients of herbal medicine. Both rare and common plants are eagerly sought after throughout China. These collectors will sell their herbs in Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan, Tungren Tang is one of the oldest and best-known herbal shops in China. It buys herbs from local collectors and distributes to herbal shops across the country. The herbs are examined for quality and weight. They are sorted, then processed before they can be used. People come here to have their prescriptions filled after being diagnosed at hospitals or clinics. Some remedies are ready made, but most prescriptions are sent upstairs to be filled. The drawers of the prescription room contains hundreds of substances for herbal medicine makes use of more than just plants. Insects, minerals, animal matter, and shells are all parts of the medical repertory. Many different ingredients are combined to achieve the desired effect. 
a prescription for flu, includes honeysuckle flowers, forsythia fruit, burdock seeds, mint, orange peel, bamboo leaves, and licorice root. The Chinese believe illness is caused by an imbalance of yin and yang elements in the body. The basis of herbal medicine is to gradually restore the proper balance. Each herb has a specific property, either warming or cooling, to treat a fever a mixture that produces a cooling effect is prescribed. All the ingredients are brewed into a bitter liquid taken twice a day. But there's a more palatable alternative. You can eat your way to health. In back of the shop is a unique restaurant specializing in herbal medicine food. Whether you have an ailment or just want to maintain good health, this is the place to eat. The manager, Mr. Zhen, is a third-generation herbalist who advises patrons. This gentleman is suffering from occasional dizziness and headaches. The prescription? A fresh carb steamed with tian ma, the tuberous root of a wild orchid. This exotic plant grows mainly in the high mountains of Sichuan and Tibet. It is very effective in restoring equilibrium. This customer has been experiencing slight stomach discomfort and a poor appetite. Mr. Chen suggests that he eat some fuling baozi. Fuling is a subterranean fungus which grows on the root of pine trees. It's a mild sedative that aids digestion. Fuling is ground into powder and sprinkled in the dough and made into pork-filled buns called baozi. This woman is seven months pregnant and eats here regularly to maintain her strength. Mr. Chen suggests a number of nutritious dishes that will fortify both mother and child. One recommendation is pork stewed with wolf berries to nourish the baby and prevent miscarriage. Each day after practice, these young athletes come here for lunch. They too believe in the wondrous powers of herbal medicine cuisine, the unique foods that promise increased vitality and stamina. Hundreds of healthful meals are served throughout the day. The ancient recipes are kept secret, passed on from generation to generation. If you're feeling run down, try this delicacy, topped with seahorse, good for supplementing energy. To replenish vital essence, order these natural curiosities called winter caterpillar summer herb. This unusual dish promises increased virility. Not only is the food therapeutic, it's delicious. The blend of good food and good health gives this unique restaurant its magic allure, attracting faithful patrons like these men, both in their 80s. Although they have a few minor ailments, they're exceptionally sprite and alert. The secret, they insist, is their daily dose of herbal medicine food.
Seated serenely by the Ming River at Luoshang in Sichuan is the world's largest Buddha, Da Fu. It was carved from the living mountain during the 8th century when Buddhism flourished in China. Buddhism came from India and had a profound effect on Chinese life. Its teachings of compassion towards one's fellow man appealed to those whose lives were a daily struggle for survival. The colorful rituals and rich imagery evoked a face more tangible than the Chinese had ever known. Buddhism forbids the taking of life. Unable to kill living creatures, Buddhists became vegetarians. The mainstay of this meatless diet is the humble soybean. In the temple courtyard, a Buddhist chef and his helpers use a traditional method to grind the soybeans into a creamy paste, the first step in its transformation. The versatile soybean has more protein per pound than any kind of meat. Yet it is more than a meat equivalent because it provides oil and essential nutrients. Even before Buddhism, the traditional Chinese diet had been based on grains and legumes. All available land was cultivated for crops. Meat was reserved for special occasions. So the vegetarian diet prescribed by Buddhism imposed few additional restrictions. Inside the huge monastery kitchen, the creamy soy bean paste is mixed with water and boiled to become soy milk. Vegetable oil sprinkled on top and rapid stirring with a split bamboo pole keep the mixture from boiling over. The heated milk is strained through a cotton sack. The milk can be consumed at this point. Most Chinese begin the day with a bowl of hot soy milk. Like milk from a cow, soy milk is the basis for a wide range of dairy-like products. When made into soft curds, it has a texture similar to cottage cheese. When dried, it's like aged cheese. When fermented, it tastes like ripe camembert.
To make bean curd called dofu, a coagulant such as gypsum is added to the strained milk. This will cause the liquid to set. The skill of the dofu master is critical. He must determine by experience how much gypsum to add. When the liquid begins to set, it's ladled into a wooden mold to cool and drain for a few hours. This batch of tofu will have a soft, silky texture and is destined for vegetarian dishes served at a temple restaurant. Dishes so tasty, they would please even the divine palate. The Chinese, pragmatic in everything, interpreted and adapted Buddhism to meet their way of life. They built temples, like Ling Ying in the city of Hanzhou, one of the largest in China. The faithful journey here to worship at the altar of the enormous golden Buddha. People come to make offerings, burn incense, and say prayers to have their wishes fulfilled. Expectant parents and grandparents pray for a boy to carry on the family name. Young girls hope for a good prospect in marriage. And villagers request favorable weather and a bountiful harvest. The temple attends to both spirit and body. Beside the ancient shrine is a vegetarian restaurant, almost as old as the temple itself. The daily menu attracts the faithful and the curious. Rarely is there an empty table. Fresh homemade tofu is prepared in numerous ways. By itself, tofu has little taste but it readily absorbs other flavors, making it an ideal staple of vegetarian cuisine. This soft tofu will be simmered with young bamboo shoots and flavored with sesame oil. Although this family is not Buddhist, they often eat at the restaurant. It's a welcome change from their usual fare. Certain dishes are too complicated to prepare at home, like this mock beef or monk's chicken with straw mushrooms, all made with tofu. Through the centuries, vegetarian cuisine became more and more elaborate. Monasteries vied with each other to please wealthy patrons and attract converts. Tantalizing and fanciful foods were created to convince the stomach and entice the soul. This unique cuisine used seasonal vegetables, flavorful wild mushrooms, tempting spices, and tofu in its many forms. Some dishes simulate the look and texture of meat or fish. These water chestnuts are cut to resemble cooked shrimp. Some dishes fool the eye with an elaborate disguise. This one begins with a wrapping made from dried tofu skin. A paste of wheat gluten holds the skin together. A puree of taro roots and slivered bean curd are spread as filling.
The skin is trimmed to size, folded, sealed, and carefully rolled into shape. The gill and eye of black mushroom lends a final touch of realism to this vegetarian fish, which will be served in the savory sauce of sweet and sour. Through the centuries, Taoism and Buddhism have profoundly influenced China. But the Chinese so thoroughly integrated the spiritual principles into daily life that they ceased to be religious practices. Instead, they've become everyday routine. This young boy savors his lunch, not because it is good for body and spirit, but because he enjoys it. 